Welcome to Yap's Money Life Show. Thank you again for your interest and your support. Today, I'm going to talk about how to avoid well-disguised scams. Last week, if you remember, I talked about uh, what is a well-disguised scam, how is it different from the obvious scam, and I also gave two examples of the scam. One is about crude oil investment, and another one is about uh, investment into a trust account under a trustee company. Now, this week, I'm going to share three tips uh, on how you can identify and avoid these kind of well-disguised scams. The first point is about regulation. I would suggest you to avoid investing into any investment proposal from the investment company which is not licensed by Bank Negara Malaysia and Security Commissions. By doing so, you will make sure yourself that you only invest into legitimate and regulated investment and do not touch any other investment. Okay, That is point number one. My point number two is about getting invest written investment proposal from all these salespersons. Okay? Uh, the written investment proposal, proposal could be called prospectus, also other name could be info memo. Okay? Uh, when you have a written investment proposal, you can find the company background, you get to know who are the shareholders, who are the directors, what is the background, get to know also where are they going to invest uh, your money into, what is the actual underlying investment, how it works and how much they charge you and how much it costs you. And most important of all, by reading into this written investment proposal, you get to know what kind of protection do they give it to you as an investor. So say for example, you want to know should something happen or something goes wrong uh, with this investment company, what happened to your investment capital. So in a legitimate, uh, a proper investment uh, proposal, proper uh, investment structure, there will be a trustee uh, to hold your uh, investor's money, uh, to protect your investment money, so that should something go wrong with the investment uh, company, your investment capital will still be protected. So you want to find out whether this investment has got such a safety features or not. The third point that I want to actually highlight is about uh, matching the promised return of this particular investment with the underlying investment that they're going to invest into. Now, what do I mean by that? Say, for example, they promise you a return of about 12% a year. Okay, and it, is, it sounds like it's a fixed promised return of 12%. Okay, but if the underlying investment is a crude oil, which is linked uh, the performance of uh, re investment return is linked to the crude oil prices, which could be very volatile. Okay, so in such a case, uh, not only uh, such a volatility may not be able to allow the fund manager or the investment company to give you the 12% return, chances are you may even lose your capital. So this is an example whereby there is a mismatch between their promised return and the investment performance nature of the underlying investment. Okay? Now, I know that I'll share with you three points just now. Honestly, I must say it's still not easy for a, a mature investor to identify uh, between a well-disguised scam compared to a legitimate investment. So if you are really not so sure about how to go about doing that, I would suggest you to look for a second opinion. Okay, of course, I would suggest that you may want to look for a professional, uh, an investment professional who has experience to see different kind of investment, who know about uh, proper investment structure. Uh, then you can get advice from them as to whether the investment proposal that you receive now, you're considering now, is something uh, safe and solid to invest. And before I leave, I would strongly suggest that you always do the research before you invest. Because many people do not do enough research before they part with their money. Okay? They only do a lot of research after they invest their money, after something goes wrong. I can assure you, uh, no, if you have already invested your money into without doing much research, no amount of research, no amount of fact-finding uh, will actually be able to in, uh, help you okay, if you 
only do that after something goes wrong. So my suggestion is that do research, do a lot enough research okay, before you part with your money. In this section, I will answer the questions that I received from the viewers, which means people like you. Okay? So I will encourage you to ask me more questions. Now, I have a question from Siwa. He is from Malacca. His question goes like this. Now, he said, uh, in episode 4, you said that insurance is only for protection only. What do you think about investing in saving plan or investment link investment offered by insurance company? Now, I always believe to grow our money effectively, we need to put our money into the right investment and to put our money into the right company. So, we need to know insurance company from the name, what do they do? They are supposed to give you insurance protection and they are very good and specialized in giving you insurance protection and they are not a specialist in investment. Okay? So for that matter, if you talk about example of saving plan, see saving plan normally is a form of say endowment. And uh, endowment policy normally can give you maybe 3 to 4% annualized return over a long period of time. So, okay, maybe maximum it give you 5% return. But that, if you compare that return, compared to the investment return that you can normally get from regulated investment, which is about 7 to 9% kind of annualized return, that is far too low. No? And when you compound this return over long, long term, you can see your, the, the money that you eventually grow actually will make a lot of difference in achieving your financial freedom. The second product that I'm talking about here is about investment link insurance. Now, if you were to compare investment link insurance to a unit trust investment, okay, let's see the comparison. So there are three points that I'm going to cover here. So number one, we talk about specialty. So obviously, unit trust management company, they specialize in investing in equities, bond, or even foreign equities. Number two, if you talk about charges, the charges offered by unit trust company is very transparent. They charge you an annual management fee and also the fund and sale charge. That's it. Okay? But as it comes to uh, investment in insurance, there may be some charges which is not so clear. There may be some hidden charges that you don't even know. Okay? Thirdly, I'm going to talk about the ease of management. When it comes to unit trust investment, when you lose money, you make money, it's very easy for you to make decision to cut because it's a straightforward investment product. But when it comes to investment link insurance, okay, if you were to have some uh, insurance protection that linked to it, when you lose money or when you make money, it's very difficult for you to decide whether you should cut it or top up because there is an implication to the insurance protection that you are enjoying. Okay, so if I were to use a analogy, say a football analogy, you will expect your striker player to go to opponent's goal post to score a goal. But would you expect your defender player to go to opponent's goal post to score a goal? That is very obvious. You want your football players uh, to play their role well in whichever position they're supposed to be in. So my conclusion is when we want to grow our money effectively, we must make sure that our money uh, is put into the right company for them to do the right job. Okay? By doing so, we can be sure that our money can work hard, work effectively to help us to achieve financial freedom. If you want me to answer your most burning questions about money, please feel free to email me your questions and WhatsApp me. Now, I have another question here from Halim. He is from Batu Cave. Uh, he say, he asked, you said in episode 1 that it's possible to get good return from regulated investment. So what should be the expected return and what does it take to get the return? Wow, quite a long question. Huh? Now, uh, to answer the first part, what should be the expected return? I would think if you were to invest properly uh, using the right way, you should be able to get about 7 to 9% annualized return uh, from regulated investment. And I would think 7 to 9% return is not bad return compared to FD, which only give you, say, 3.5%. Now, 
But to do that, you may need to follow three steps that I mentioned here. The first step is about determining meaning. What are the asset classes that you want to have in your unit trust investment portfolio? For example, you may want to actually decide uh, how many percent you want to actually invest into Malaysia equity, how many percent you want to invest into Asia Pacific equity, how many percent into global equity, and how many percent in Malaysia bond, how many percent in maybe Asia Pacific bond. So this is what I mean by determining the asset class that you want to have in your unit trust portfolio. Second step is about selecting the best or big fund from, uh, for each of your asset class that you have in your investment portfolio. Say for example, in Malaysia equities, you want to select the better quality funds. Okay? If you can, for example, refer to the H newspaper uh, under uh, the H, uh, what, the deeper table there, you can see the performance of the funds uh, in different asset category. Okay? Under the category of Malaysia equity funds, uh, you may not necessarily pick the top one or top two funds. Okay? But if you are able to pick, say, the top 25% you know, of the funds under Malaysia equity category, category that actually perform consistently for, say, uh, three years or five years, Okay, that is how you can actually select best of fund for that category and the same apply to other categories. Okay? Now, step number three is about uh, active performance management. Of course, when you invest into regulated investment like Unitrust, you should actually let the investment to do its job uh, for three to five years or even longer than that. But that does not mean that you don't do anything in between. You should review you know, and you should monitor the performance of the funds under the portfolio. Okay? And if you see, say for example, uh, Asia, equity, Asia Pacific Equity Fund that you have uh, performing you know, uh, consistent, consistently lower than other Asia Pacific Equity Fund, you may want to remove this particular Asia Pacific Equity Fund and replace it with other better performing uh, Asia Pacific Equity Fund. So this is what I mean by active performance management. Along the way, uh, what, you say, uh, what I said before, if there's a profit to take, you may want to take profit as well. Okay? So I believe you know, the answer to your question is a big yes. You can definitely get good return from regulated investment provided you follow the process I share with you. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about how to grow your money with high certainty, please visit my website. Have a great day. Hey there, if you like my video, please remember to subscribe to my channel.